Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide to Dominion, shall we? And I thought it would be useful to actually play the game against a harder difficulty AI to show you what that's like. And in my opinion, the medium level UI is actually quite challenging. Um, now that might just be because I'm a bad Dominion player. Actually, it probably is because of that. But I think playing a one-on-one -on -one game against a medium AI provides a good challenge and it's a big step up from the easy AI. So let's look at that and we can hopefully see some new interactions and some new cards than we saw in the previous step. As you get better at the game, graduating to a higher level uh, UI is definitely helpful. Additionally, um, you know, adding more players changes the game too. So I'm going to change this AI by clicking on it and just say medium AI. And um, I'm going to go ahead and say play. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I feel like... I'm actually going to restart this one because we, these are a lot of the same cards that we had last time. So let's go ahead and resign and um, rematch. All right, here we go. New cards. So some of these cards are going to be the same. And this is how it's going to be in Dominion, which is that there's, if you're just playing with the base set, there's not an infinite number of, you know, possibilities. You're going to see a lot of overlap, but that's cool because you'll get more comfortable with the cards. And it's always fun when like you have some cards that become your favorite and you see them and, you know, you can prioritize them and pull off the combos that you're looking for. So we are playing against the medium AI and we apparently get to go first okay i'll look at the log just to verify that yep so we're going first and we only have two money if i look in the supply pile there is nothing to buy with two copper nothing the only thing i could buy would be an estate a curse or a copper and these are terrible so i'm actually not going to buy any of these right now estates are only something you want to purchase like at the very end of the game um if you're racing to get that edge on victory points because they're going to slow down your deck. Now, even though this is a terrible first turn, and I'm going to end by, what it means is that we get a really good next turn, which is now we have five copper. Now, I always like to, especially on medium AI, keep an eye on my opponent by looking at what they did. So you can see in the top ribbon, it'll tell you their last action. They bought a remodel. Now, remodel, okay, what does that do? Well, if I right-click on it, you can see this allows them to trash a card from their hand and gain a card costing up to two more than it, okay? So remodel is a cool card in some respects, but the thing that's interesting about buying it early, if you think about your starter deck, I have a copper but this is only costing zero. So if I remodel this, yes, I get the opportunity to trash it, which is cool. But the problem is, what is worth two that I'm going to buy? Nothing, as we just demonstrated. So remodeling all of these coppers doesn't really help us. Now, you could remodel an estate, but again, you don't get to remodel it up to a duchy you because that's a th value jump of three. You could remodel it into one of these four cost cards if you wanted, but um, it doesn't seem that good to me. So instead, let's look at what other options are available for us. We have five money. So you always want to try to spend the most amount of money that you can to be efficient. And let's look at these five cost cards. So there's a bandit. Now the bandit uh, she gains you a gold, okay? And then it says each other player reveals the top two cards of their deck, trashes a revealed treasure other than a copper, and discards the rest. So this is, like, ridiculous, this card. This is um, so punishing, I can't even believe it. Uh, but basically, you play this, and it doesn't have any value on that turn. So there's that downside. It doesn't do anything to you for that turn for your action 
except it's going to gain you a gold, all right? Um, and that means that you get a gold into your discard pile, I believe. I don't think it goes into your hand. That would be ridiculous. Maybe it does. We'll see how that plays out. I'm pretty sure it goes in your discard pile. So you're going to get a gold, which costs six. So that's beautiful right there. But then also, you have the potential to make them trash a silver or gold. That's not discard. That's like you have to get rid of it, okay? And then even if they did have copper, um, they would just discard that. So you're like eliminating their money. It's so good. I'm going to buy this all day of the week. Now, it is an attack, but there's no cards in this supply like the moat to even prevent an attack. Now, the other options would be the library, which this is a great card. Draw until you have seven cards. So this allows you to fill up your hand and you can skip actions to try to filter through to get money. So this is very, very good. But in the beginning of the game, you're drawing more cards which are just your starter deck it's not bad like your starter deck cards are good and you have a chance of getting more money which is great but um i think the bandit is stronger and then finally there's a market market's one of my favorite cards in the game it's just a card that you're never sad to get because you play it every single time you draw it you basically draw a market and as long as you have an action, you play this, and it gives you the action back, it gives you a card back, it gives you an extra buy, and it gives you a money. So it's phenomenal, and if you have a bunch of these, you can just keep chaining markets together and you know do all sorts of things. Having extra buys is always good. However, one money is not a huge upgrade. This is a card that I like to buy more in the middle of the game than in the beginning of the game, where I'm just trying to um, flip my economy like I want more money to buy better cards more often like if I have an extra market in my hand this isn't going to overwhelmingly tilt me in a positive direction at first so it's a little bit slower so I'm going to buy um, the bandit so I'm going to play all of my treasures and I'm going to buy that bandit all right and again we get this two money hand which is unfortunate um, so we're just going to, you know, end our buys. What'd they buy? They bought a silver. That's good for our bandit. End the buys. All right. And they bought another remodel. So they're really stacking these remodels. Let me see what they've been doing. Did they remodel anything yet? Um, interesting. Not yet. So anyway, uh, I'm going to play all my treasures. Now, this is where buying another bandit is a little bit risky it's such a good card but the problem is that it takes an action and it doesn't give an action so if i draw two bandits i can only play one uh and it's kind of like a, a law a dead card so because of that uh, i feel like i will buy a market now i could buy a library as well but the problem with the library it's not really the problem but it's like i'm gonna want to get a village at some point uh, because the village gives you two actions so you could play the village to get an extra action and then play the library and then you know um no even then it doesn't work the library is just not good at drawing actions unless you can get a bunch of actions but like if i libraried and i got a bandit i can't play it because i have no actions left uh, so i'll buy a market that's fine oh yeah here we go okay so what did they do there they added a poacher and a silver so they played remodel oh they're trashing estates into silvers okay that's a fine plan that that makes sense so their line is they want to trash their estates losing a victory point but gaining um, money and speeding up their deck that's actually a good play I, I like that just fine so i'm gonna bandit them right away and we gain a gold and let's see what happens so yeah the gold goes over here into our discard pile as we talked about let me see this all right, so you can look at this, and they revealed a copper and a silver. So that silver they bought, they just had to trash it because of the bandit. And then the copper, they have to discard. So that's just so phenomenal. I'm going to play these, and we have four money. What do we want uh, with four money? Poacher is very good. Poacher says you get to draw a card, you get an action, and you get a money. So it's basically like a market without the extra buy. However... If there's empty cards in the supply pile, as the game gets on going later, you have to discard cards um, when you play her. So, you know, there's that to think about. Smithy is just draw three. Fantastic. Throne Room would let us bandit twice, um, which is 
absurd, but the only problem with Throne Room is if you draw it by itself, it does nothing. It's kind of a dead card. Uh, so I'll take a Poacher. That's fine. And they remodeled. Um, let's see what they did. They went ahead and they remodeled their remodel into a gold. Okay, and so now they got a silver and a gold. So they're getting good money. That's kind of scary. Let's play our market. All right, and we have four money. Uh, let's see. I'm going to buy another poacher. And we have an extra buy. I'm going to end it. All right, they poached and they bought another poacher too. All right, so I'm going to play my poacher. And we have seven money now. Goodness gracious. So what are we going to do with seven money? Um, there's never really a downside, even though it wastes money, to just buying gold. Gold is so good. So they bought a gold as well. All right, so they have five cards in their hand. Let's see if we get anything good with our bandit. Um, oh, we just wrecked him. Okay, so... Look at this. Let's look at the log. All right, so we gained a gold. They re revealed a gold and had to trash it, and they discarded their copper. Ouch. We have four money. I'll buy one smithy to get some card draw going. The smithy is bad if you draw bandit, of course, but if we draw gold, we'll be real happy. So we'll play a poacher, we'll play a market, and we play these and we have five money. And now it's just time to go markets all day long. Market. And buy. Okay, so... They added a poacher. Now, what I always like to do, too, is keep track of how many victory points do they have. They have one, and I have three. In a two-player game, especially against this medium AI, you have to watch when the race begins, because Dominion is a race. It's a race to scale your deck, and then it becomes a race to get victory points. If they start buying provinces, it could already be too late. Like, if they buy one, you need to start buying them immediately. Um, and... To that effect, we want to buy provinces whenever you have eight money in this two-player game. You probably have to buy a province. Like, it, the opportunity doesn't present itself all the time. We just drew eight money, and we need to get a province. We need to start the race. All right, they just bought a province, okay? So now you can see the race is on. Now, this is great for us right here. Um, because I can't play my smithy, unfortunately, but I'm going to poacher and um, I'm going to bandit. And it looks like they didn't have to trash anything. They discarded a copper um, and they got to keep their smithy. And then we're going to go ahead and play gold. Now we have seven money. We unfortunately cannot buy a province. I'm not at the point where I want to start buying duchies yet. I'm going to buy a gold. But when it gets closer, like if there's four provinces left, it's time to start buying duchies and get victory points and skip on gold. All right, they added a market. I'm going to actually buy a market for five. They just added a gold, but we get to da -da -da -da, play a market, play a poacher. We have nine money. It's time for a province. And we have an extra buy with a gold. Um, we're a one money. We're not going to buy a copper or a curse. Of course not. End turns. That was terrifying. They added a province. It's Look how close it is. 15 to 13. I'm going to play the poacher. I'm going to play the market. And I'm going to play the bandit. Yes, we trashed another gold of theirs. And we have two money. I'm going to play all my treasures. Now we have ten money. I could buy two duchies um, to get six points. But why when I could buy a province? <laughs> um, and now we have two money and we're not going to buy anything. I could buy an estate. The advantage of the estate would be this. If I bought an estate right here. Okay. Um, there's three provinces left. Provinces are worth six points. So add six points to them. And that puts them at 19. And then if they bought a duchy, they'd go to 22, which would beat us. So I'm 
actually going to buy an estate just to avoid that happening. They bought a duchy. So they're getting desperate. They had seven money, I think, and they had to buy a duchy. So now we're pulling away. If we can buy another province, we might be able to lock this up. I'm going to play the market and I'm going to play the smithy. And we have seven money. Not unfortunately enough to buy a province, um, but we need to buy a duchy. It's getting really, really close. We have two money. Do I want to buy an estate? It could give us a really, really bad turn if I buy an estate. So I'm actually going to skip this time. And they added two duchies. So they're right behind us. Oh, we got lucky and drew a gold and we can buy a province. Oh, that's a miracle. That might actually be um, what we need to potentially win. We'll see. I'm not going to buy anything with zero, of course. They bought an estate. They had a terrible turn. So this is great for us. We get to poacher. Now, before you play the poacher, make sure there's nothing. There's no empty piles. There's not. Buy a poacher or play a poacher. Now we have 11 money, so we can buy a province. And this game is actually looking like it's over. I'm going to play a market. And I'm going to play treasures. We have five money. They're buying estates. Like, the, the AI knows that it's race time. So they're just trying to load up on victory points to see if they can sneak out a victory. Do not let them do this, of course. But our only option is to buy a duchy right here. And that's fine. And we'll end the turn. Now, if they don't buy the last province, they didn't. Wow, we had, we got really lucky this game. We'll go ahead and play the market and the market and the poacher and play our treasures and buy the province. This is, finishes the game, but we could buy an estate anyway. End buys and we win. We won pretty handily. Now, the reason that I feel like we won right there is um, the bandit. Them buying remodel early and the bandit did it for us. The bandit is just so strong. Gaining a gold is incredibly powerful. And then the fact that you can trash their money and slow them down for a bit was key. So we were doing that to them. They couldn't really prevent that, which was great. And then, as you saw, um, you know, we were just racking up money with markets, poachers, and gaining gold from the bandit remodel did allow them to exchange their estates for silver that's kind of nifty but it just seemed too slow to me and in a two-player game against a medium ai you cannot be slow like it has to go fast because once the race begins for victory points man um the game goes quickly you see this game was actually pretty fast like i was talking about everything and it was only like 18 minutes so these games can go ultra fast once you get really good at the game but i wanted to show you um how the difficulty ramps up on medium and some new cards so that you can further see what this game is capable of now of course the game becomes even more interesting if you um you know buy some of the expansion sets and add more cards to add more variety. Uh, but, you know, for now, this is beautiful to see for free. And I'm kind of holding off to see if they ever put any of the DLCs uh, on sale. Everyone, I hope you're finding this to be useful. I hope that you are enjoying this game. Let me know if you have any questions about Dominion. And let me know in the comments below if you want to see any more of me playing the game and explaining things. Uh, I could play like a, a game with more than two players, uh, for example, something like that, if you were interested in seeing that. Thanks so much for watching. Take care.